Many thanks. Uh, and very good evening to the very august panelists and the wonderful audience here who is actually very obediently sitting here to the last session and last speaker. Thanks for that. And uh, actually, I had also been very obedient for following the moderator as he wanted that we should restrict ourselves to the five slides. And I have done that. So <laughs> I, I won't be taking much time on that. So uh, a number of things already been talked about and the grid, grid integration, renewables, transformation, and uh, probably we have been hearing about all these mixes and how to get into the transformations uh, right from the very beginning of this conference. So uh, how I thought was that could be a little different because we are talking all the same thing and we are surely wanting uh, to go in the same direction in the good benefit of the society. So what I'm trying to focus is little to touch upon the economic side of it when we talk about grid transformation. And uh, for the talk and to limit myself within that time constraint, took two cases, one on the grid storage and second on the decentralized storage. And why and uh, how this becomes important is because whenever we are talking about the storage, the batteries, the cost becomes very, very important. And uh, here when we uh, realize that the cost of generation, especially talking from the Indian perspective, uh, has already come down drastically, be it solar, renewables, we know our, uh, the costing, uh, it's very aggressive per unit. Uh, and when we talk about uh, the coal, uh, already it is the renewables are competing with the coal plants. And therefore, when we talk about the grid storage, what, at what cost are we, are we going to supply to the end customer? And would the end customer be willing to pay that much of an amount is, is of importance. And how can we go, go ahead with that and does that make sense? There's a lot of it that depends upon the type of the battery the area or the country where we are trying to implement that because uh, that's where the interest rates play a very important role. So if we talk about the Western countries where uh, it is about 1% to 2% of the interest rate versus when we talk about in India starting from 12%, 14% of the interest rates, uh, it's a huge lot of play that start uh, uh, becoming very, very important. So when we see this, one very important uh, parameter that matters is the type of the batteries, though we often ignore uh, that part of it. So uh, be it when we talk about the cost per unit uh, contributing that is coming from the type of the battery. So if we see for the cost per unit starting from 15,000, I'm sorry, I'm keeping it in uh, Indian currency. Uh, uh, so 15,000 rupees to up to going till about 30,000 rupees and with different, different cycles. So from here, I mean, those of you know, whom, uh, who know about the batteries, you can easily figure it out what different chemistries are we talking about here. So essentially the cell A and B would fall in the category of NMC and advanced NMC. Cell C and D would be different variations on the LTO actually. So when we talk about and compare and consider this, along with that how much is the uh, capital cost uh, playing when we have the usage variation of these batteries starting from let's say the different cases considered here is one cycle per day to going till about three cycles per day with interest rate of two to ten percent and for the uniformity just taken the battery efficiency to be same across which is 96 percent so if you see that uh, we'll see the first case where we have cell a and b uh, proving it to be much better at lower interest rates and along with that even this LD. But whenever we are going with a higher interest rate, that's where the whole equation changes. Now look at the fourth graph. It's, it's a reverse of it, right? So we say that the higher uh, Pay, paying, uh, 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 I mean, higher giving performance batteries with the higher cost also prove to be better even, uh, I mean, in all interest rates when we are using the cells at higher uh, cycles per day. That means the better the utilization, the better it is 
yeah but most usually we are not even at 1 or at 3 we are somewhere uh, between that where it is about 1.5 cycles per day maybe when we are talking about the indian scenarios and we uh, where the grid may not be very stable or the renewables are not available uh, of course available with the god's wish so whenever we are talking about that it's something like that the typical scenario that we can we can take and where uh, we say that for higher interest rates it's actually the uh, cell b and cell c that makes most sense and that's where the whole idea is that it's just not about uh, which battery we should take it is about how economic sense it would make when we add the grid uh, batteries to the grid uh, the second use case that I've taken is on the decentralized storage, not on the grid side, but on the decentralized side. And can we control that? So we, we were hearing about the responsive and the proactive uh, use case that can make a make a great difference. So what we kind of considered uh, here is the three different uh, grid states as deficit, deficit, normal, and surplus state, where we have uh, the, uh, the states as the grid availability. And what we applied uh, here is, which is actually a live use case as well now, uh, the surplus at, at, at that point in time, we charge whole lot of battery banks that we have. We try to use the other uh, means, of, means of storages. And by that, we mean uh, we try to chill the water during the surplus time so that during deficit and normal time, we can make best use of it. Uh, this is more uh, uh, applicable when we apply the time of day metering here because when we are talking about the deficit grid, that means the price per unit grid is really high. Uh, whenever we are talking about that in India, we see in, uh, in a few states where it is happening uh, or introduced, it's about double the price that we are talking about in deficit state, right? So. Uh, uh, what we took was as a precursive, as a typical uh, consumption behavior of the loads, be it the chilling water, and we have um, uh, in our, I mean, the photograph that you see on your left is of our uh, research park. Uh, it's about 500,000 square feet area, and we have the India's first chiller water storage plant there. Uh, where we try to chill the water during the surplus grid and consume it during the deficit in normal uh, times. So uh, looking at our consumption patterns of the lights, chillers, AHUs, water pumps, etc., etc., we try to apply that adoption of playing with the loads as per the availability of the grid prices. So once we try to do that, uh, the results are really, really good. And uh, if you see just the green portion is actually the surplus one, the blue portion at the back side, the bars indicates a normal one. And the deficit is really the uh, pink portion that uh, the orange one on uh, here that you can see. So per our basis, you will see that the smaller peaks and the bars are varying. Right? So if we apply the APRL algorithm, that is the uh, responsive algorithm if we apply, versus if we don't apply, uh, some hours, the, uh, the hourly consumption of the energy would be higher with respect, with usage of APRL sometimes as were, uh, compared to others. That is because during the surplus time, we are trying to use more energy, right? But if we see it overall, uh, we saw that we are able to consume huge electricity, one, overall, plus how it, it is getting translated to the uh, uh, economics is that the total cost saving due to the application of this responsive loads with respect to the grid amounts to be about 1.6 lakhs per day, which is about 50 lakhs per month. It's a huge saving for a research park kind of a building that we have there. And uh, I would say that if we, if we see it there and what has been already translated, about 30% of it is already translated and we are seeing a lot of savings there. And this is over and above uh, the, uh, the other uh, parts that we have been kind of uh, uh, championing and that is about DCification of the loads. And the whole of the research park right now is running on DC loads. Uh, and interestingly, our air conditioners, the ACs are running on DCs. 
so the whole of the distribution side of it, leave aside on the generation that is HVAC side of it, but on the uh, distribution side of it is all running on 48 volt DC. And much of our loads that is uh, computers, laptops, uh, uh, whole of the routers, the lighting, etc., is everything is on 48 volt DC. And there is a good renewable mix that we are getting. We have about one, me uh, one megawatt uh, of solar power installed on a rooftop of the of the. I mean that that was all the roof that we had. Uh, so this is uh, a kind of a good combination and also kind of acting as a good uh, field where we are applying our. Uh, uh, our, all the algorithms are on, and our intelligence monitoring and trying to do that. So just to summarize on the grid part of it, uh, promoting a good mix of renewables with grid requires certainly the storage, but the economics play a very important role where this depends upon the type of the batteries, interest rates, and the usage frequency a lot. Uh, so wherever we have to apply it, we have to be very careful why and how we are how to select the uh, kind of the energy storage that we are talking about. The second that it is the demand load management and optimized consumption through whatever we call it APRL, but whatever you want to call that kind of an algorithm. Club with different types of storage is a huge electricity cost saver. And this is not only good for the consumer side, but also helps in bringing uh, a, a flat, flatness of the demand for the discoms to handle. That's that part. And of course, like the fellow panelists and like we are hearing uh, uh, all across that, this kind of an application is there across all these segments. It's just not about the industry. It's about electric uh, mobility, transport sector, domestic sector. So everywhere else we can start implementing this kind of strategy once we have uh, the TOD metering, especially happening in the country where these algorithms would start making a lot more sense. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ms. Kaur, for this uh, contribution um, on, on the storage issues uh, for the grid transformation section. I um, guess we don't have time for um, discussions. Even I would be most than excited to, to discuss here with the speakers about um, our uh, great topic. But um, gala dinner and so on is approaching, um, slowly, I guess. and. <laughs> Uh, so my task is to, to close the session uh, for now. So um, I'd like to uh, close with some words. I, I cite from Mr. Baba who said, uh, we are in transformation. So we have been in transformation and the transformation is going on. So um, I, I think uh, according to the attendance we had in the session, uh, you are all excited to see how this transformation uh, will be realized over the next years and even going to a digital um, a grid digital utility we have uh, seen as a, a future vision. Um, I think that's more than fascinating and so I'd like to close this session and hand over to the chair in uh, giving us logistics for the rest of the day actually. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Martin Brown. Uh, thank you, Robert, and all the other speakers for uh, really accommodating to our schedule here. Uh, do apologize for uh, the lack of time here because uh, of the delay that we had uh, this morning, but please uh, take advantage of the evening session uh, to have your uh, interactions. Right. So, uh, With that said, uh, now I'd like to uh, uh, request uh, Dr. Um, Satish Chetwani uh, from ERDA uh, to hand over a mem memento to Mr. Robert Cloughus. <clears throat> A big round of applause, please. Great. Now, uh, I would like to request uh, Dr. Winfred uh, Dam uh, to come and hand over the mementos uh, to all the uh, speakers, the distinguished speakers here. <coughs> so, Dr. Prabjot.
Yeah, Mr. Akilur Rama. <clears throat> Mr. Ramji, you got it? <clears throat> Mr. Baba? And of course to Professor Martin Brown for a fantastic moderation. Thank you very much. Thank you all uh, to the speakers. I think you can get this. Thank you. Um, the logistics for the rest of the day, uh, I learned that there are shuttles that are arranged uh, from gate one and they will be leaving in about uh, probably about 15 minutes. So the time uh, in my clock is like 7 o'clock, so it should reach, uh, I mean, it will probably depart by 7.15. And uh, the rest of the session uh, starts at Crown Plaza, and that starts at, uh, uh, you know, tentatively at 7.30, uh, barring a few minutes here there. Um, huh, Hotel Crown Plaza, Greater Noida. That's, you know, just make sure that uh, you're, you're, you're in sync with uh, the, the right hotel there. Uh, and then one more thing, uh, please, before we leave. Uh, tomorrow's session, uh, we're going to start at 9.30 sharp. Uh, so I request uh, all of you to, uh, to be present there uh, by that time uh, and, uh, and look forward to a great session. Again, thank you all for your uh, patience. Uh, and with that, uh, we come to the end of uh, uh, you know, the first day session here. Thank you all. Bye -bye.